We are joined by Miami Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz. Coach, thanks for the time this morning. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Yeah, uh, it's getting close, isn't it? We were just talking about the NFL teams that are reporting Chiefs report today. You're just a couple days away from getting it going, huh? Yeah, Thursday report date, Friday our first practice, so we're getting it going. Uh, so wow. we'll start with, you know, I want to ask you a, a difficult question, but a, a real-life question, because uh, earlier this offseason, obviously, you accepted the job at Temple and then had the opportunity to return to Miami. Walk me through a little of what that process was like for you in going through that decision making. Yeah, December thirtieth was a was a crazy day, uh, I, and I don't know anyone that's ever been in a similar situation. You know, we played in our bowl game on Thursday. We flew back to Miami on Friday. Um, I was going to bring the new staff into Philadelphia after the new year. I didn't want everyone to have to come right before the holiday, and I had actually flown an offensive coordinator candidate to Miami on that Sunday. And we were sitting in a hotel room in Miami interviewing when um, my phone kept buzzing. And I'm trying to ignore her. I'm trying to be a good interviewer. <laughs> and finally, I turned it over, and, and it's my wife. And, and I knew she knew what I was doing, and she wouldn't call. Us. And, and there were a bunch of text messages like, I need you to call me right now. And so my first instinct was something happened with my family. Right. So I tell the guy, I'm listening. This is really unprofessional, but I need to go take this call. And, and that's when she mentions that she just very deadpan voice. She goes, Mark Rick just retired. And because no one had any idea that was coming at that moment, the, the room kind of starts spinning around because number one, you think for Mark, because, you know, Mark and I are really good friends. And I knew that if he made that decision, a lot of thought had gone into it. Second, you all of a sudden you, you think about temple and you're like, are you really going to be that guy? You know, you hear about these stories of like oh, that yeah. guy that walks away and, and all of a sudden you realize you're the main character in that story. And, uh, and then you wonder, do you even have a shot at Miami? I mean, just, you know, this weird, you know, sort of timing aspect of the whole deal. It's just something you couldn't prepare for. So it, you end up taking the Miami job. And now a little less, you know, of what we've seen in the past with some coaches who leave, don't talk to their players. You never really got to know any of the players there, obviously just being named the head coach. So was it a little easier to make that move because of that or still really difficult? It's still difficult, you know, because <laughs> – those guys in that locker room are going to win at Temple. They, mm -hmm. they've, got, they, they've got a really good team regardless of who's going to be at the helm. And, um, you know, they, they deserve someone who wants to be for them. You know, and, and I felt like it was going to be a great thing if, if, if we went to Temple. But, uh, but this is home, you know, yeah. and this is the University of Miami. And it was just the, it was the one occasion, the one set of scenarios that could result put into this result. Well, I, and really quick, when you say home, you were born in Miami. Oh, I yeah, mean, this born is there. Yeah. You, went, you went to Florida State, but you were born in Miami. You've been the D coordinator there since 2016. So, but more importantly, it was where you you were brought. That's out. correct. Yes. Uh, well, and, and it's much like the conversation we've had around NBA free agency. There's a right. certain thing you can't put a price tag on, and that's right. going home for right. so many people. When you returned to Miami, what was the reaction? I mean, obviously you were you weren't really gone. So right. yeah. from the from the players <laughs> in the locker room, how did they sort of receive that in, well, in Miami? It was really um, odd because so it, this is all going on right at the turn of the of the new year. Miami's in winter break until like January 14th. So it's really, really bizarre. I don't even see our players for two weeks until our first team meeting where you really get to be face-to-face -face with those guys. But that was, you know, of course, there's a lot of text contact and phone calls, especially with the older guys that have been with me a long time. And But that was neat because that gave me a chance to get the staff, you know, put together and really a chance to really settle in on, okay, here's who we're going to be. Here's how we're going to do it. So when we got in front of that team the first time, we could really set the expectations. Oh, we're talking to Manny Diaz, head coach at uh, Miami Hurricanes, going into this year. And we growing up, we said you grew up in Miami. Your dad was the uh, the mayor of Miami. So, what do you think would be the harder gig, being the mayor of Miami, <laughs> or now being the head coach of the U? Yeah, that depends on what the scoreboard yeah. says, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it always it always changes. You, you know, have, you have a lot more alumni breathing down your neck at the U. It seems That's right. right. We, They're there all the time. We we can't say the polling numbers are inaccurate, right? We actually have a. <laughs> We we actually have a score up on the board, so uh, you know, and and we're Miami. It's it's a place with high expectations, but that's the way we want it. That's where you want to coach. You want to coach somewhere where where championships are are the norm and the standard. It is one of the more amazing things because a lot of pro players who went to the U go back and train there. So right. I would imagine, and now when players are there currently at Miami, that when they're working out in the summertime. They get to see a lot of that. I imagine right. that's got to be an, an incredible atmosphere for them. It's one of the things that makes Miami really special. I, you know, there's a lot of programs in college football that, that you know, take a lot of pride in what they've done. Miami is very unique for me because we are a program that belongs to our football alumni. Because If you really think about the, the coaching history of Miami, you know, Schnellenberger got it going, but then he left. Mm -hmm. And then Jimmy Johnson came in, and then he left. 
Then Dennis, Dennis Erickson came in and won two when he left. Mm-hmm. So you have, you have three guys that won four national championships and were all gone. And then Larry Coker came in, won a national championship. So there's been four head coaches that have won five national championships, which to me, what's a common denominator there? It's the players. There's not the one transcendental coach that really defined the program. The players own the University of Miami program. So I want those guys to be around and feel their ownership in what we're trying to get done. We're talking to Miami Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz in studio. Golick and Wingo, Jason fits in for Trey with Mike Golick. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit, you know, the, the u- uniqueness of Miami. One thing particularly unique about what you guys are doing this year is sort of how you're building your roster. In, in a transfer portal world where kids are coming in and trying to quickly move over to different teams, there's a nickname now, Transfer Portal U, for right. Miami because you guys have done things different. You've really gone to the transfer portal and you brought everybody together. Why that approach? Well, it was a combination of timing and necessity. So – after the early signing day period in December, we didn't have a very good December at the University of Miami. We played very poorly in our bowl game, lost some recruits in December. So we made the turn with a lot of scholarships still to give out. And the store, the high school store, was kind of picked clean. Right, right. And we had some issues on our roster. I mean, there were some things that were, that were you know, quite obvious to see that we felt like we had to improve. At the same time, the transfer portal, which is really just a fancy word for mm-hmm. the new set of rules, was coming into focus. So... It was sort of that match made in heaven where we had sort of the scholarships to give, and then here was this new class of, of kids that were out there. And, and you know, one sort of got – we got one in, and that kind of led to the next one and the next one, and, and then it, it, fit, it, it filled the need for us. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.